welcome back to Board Game Renaissance. We're taking a look at the setup and initial mission that I'm going to put together here for Warfighter, World War II tactical combat card game. In the previous video, we took a look at all our decks, we opened them up, we separated them out, and now I'm going to try to put together a sample mission so that I can show how the game actually works. And I want to preface this by saying that uh, I'm relatively new to wargaming, so it's still kind of a learning process to me. I won't be making the best choices during the playthrough, but the goal is to kind of show how the game works and help newcomers uh, this kind of game have a starting place. And, and also I'm hoping to help anyone who's a veteran wargamer. Hopefully it, this will be useful to that group as well. Uh, I also want to say that uh, there are some other great YouTube channels out there that got me into this genre of games. Uh, initially, I was looking at where to find solo games, actually. So I went out and looked for some uh, solo options, and I ran into a couple of places, actually. There's Ricky Royal, who ran through the uh, original Warfighter, which is the, the modern version of this game. Uh, it's called the Special Forces Tactical Combat Card Game. And then also another channel, Single Handed Warfare, and Derek over there at Single Handed Warfare, he introduced me to some other pretty cool war games like the other DVG game that I showed in the previous video, Thunderbolt Apache Leader. Also, uh, there's Marco Wargamer. He has some pretty cool stuff. So anybody interested in, in this genre game, take a look at those channels. Let's go ahead and get started. What I, what I plan on doing here is let's maybe, since this is all new to me, I'm going to go ahead and take out the, uh, the rule book here, and I'm going to set up based on this sample mission here. Uh, we don't necessarily have to follow every single step they have here. I'm probably only gonna do one or two turns anyways, just to show how the game works and how to set it up. Uh, but I wanna use their example to show how they built a, a group of soldiers in order to run this mission and that, and which mission they chose as well is kind of good for a, kind of a tutorial. So let's just call this a quick tutorial kind of thing. I am going to first, Let's take a look at the table here. I have all the cards separated out as we saw before. I'm actually gonna go with the frontline hostels. So these are all the frontline hostels. These are gonna be the ones that are a little easier to encounter. So we have the hostile deck slot here on our board. The elite deck, I'm just gonna set aside. Uh, this is the huge action deck. It's clearly the biggest deck you have in this core game. We have our location deck here in Europe. We talked about that before in the previous video, and the event deck. So um, both of these will be placed on their spots on the board. I have now to choose a mission and an objective. So uh, in the tutorial, they chose the mission called Just Another Day. So this one, we're just gonna choose one mission and then the rest of the cards will go back to the box. So this mission, okay, so it's telling us that our total resources is 23. So that's what we have, that's how many resource points we have to build our group of soldiers to run the mission. It also tells us that we have seven turns to complete this mission. Uh, and the objective, which will be essentially uh, the final location, will be at location number three. Uh, there's no loadout changes, so basically it's like a short mission that these guys are going to go on. So let's go ahead and choose this mission. I'm going to put the rest of the missions to the side. Mission card goes right here on the mission slot of the board. And next we need to choose an objective. This will be the final location and they chose the bunker clearing. So the bunker clearing has a list of things that we'll go over when we get to there. Basically it says in order to enter into this location, you need to discard two of the cards out of your player soldier's hand. It'll tell us how many hostiles, how many experience points worth of hostiles we need to draw when we activate this location. So by that, I mean, this location, it is a location, even though it's an objective. But starting out, it's going to be, it is going to be deactivated. I have my timer and my inactive tokens both in here. So I'm going to put the timer on number seven here for the mission timer. And our objective is inactive until we choose to activate it. So the rules say in order to activate the final objective, you have to be in an adjacent location and declare as an action that you're going to activate. Uh, and then once it's active, then hostiles will start appearing here based on this chart. So that's objective deck. We're gonna set that aside. We only chose a mission and objective so far. So now on our mission card, we only have 23 resource points to use. And what they did was they chose as their player soldier, which is the one where you can equip them with whatever you want. They chose McDougal. And he starts with three experience points and a panic skill. 
And our other soldiers we chose, uh, or they chose in their sample, is Walsh. And he is going to be a non-player soldier. So non-player soldiers, they come with a list of weapons, gear, and skills as a starting point. So the thing to remember is this seven will count towards the resource total of 23, but all of these things come with it. So when we add these to our player area, these things will not add to our total cost of resources. And they chose two squad soldiers. These two squad soldiers are the ones that will not have any weapons that come with them. They chose Taylor and Smith. Taylor says he only has one action. He has two health. So when he has two health, he can do one action if he rolls an eight, he hits at range one. If he rolls a six, he hits at range zero. If he only has one health, means he's almost dead. He still gets one action, but now it takes a nine to hit somebody from one, a range one and a seven to hit from range zero. Range zero meaning that you're in the same location. Um, he also comes with the panic skill. Smith is the last soldier that we are bringing in. Uh, he actually gets two actions, but he only has one health. Uh, he hits uh, at range zero, so he has to be in the same location. Uh, with a six or higher. He also gets this hardy token, which we talked about before for hot locations. So he would be great for North Africa campaigns uh, and expansions. He's good for hot, but I don't think in this particular mission there will be any hot related stuff. All right, so now for the skills. McDougal, both McDougal and Taylor have panic skills and Walsh has a green skill. I believe everything that's in red is is a skill so let's find panic and green here's panic here's two panics and a green okay We've got it all here together all right those are the only skills that we're going to need for these particular soldiers okay so panic with mcdougal panic with taylor and green for walsh all right, so I believe that's the end of our soldier selection. This is the rest of our soldiers. I'll set those aside as well. And now, weapons. Okay, McDougal, we can choose whatever we want, which is why it's called a player soldier. And also, let's take a look closer. Um, he has a health of five, which means I can have five, uh, five action cards in my hand at a time. If he ever loses any health, then my hand size reduces. So if he has three health, then I can only hold three cards in my hand for actions. Uh, a load out of 10, which is how heavy his gear can be. And we'll look at that in just a second. And then those are his starting skills. For Walsh, he has three health. So column three here. Um, and actually, it shows that actions will change. So if he has three health, he gets three actions. If he has two health, he gets two actions. If he has one health, he gets one action. And then it comes with these, these uh, weapons and gear. So And he also, oh, we forgot the Corman skill. Whoops. Let's go back and grab that really quick. He's a corpsman, which means he's, oh, there it is, right on top. Uh, he is one of those medics, right? Uh, can run around and help people with their uh, with their injuries. Okay, so actually the corpsman skill, let's take a look really quick, says that um, he can add two to his rolls to heal when he has to go heal somebody. And the way he's going to do that is with the first aid kit that comes with his selection. So here's the first aid kit in our gear in our gear deck. So we'll take the first aid kit. We'll add that. He has, he's a corpsman with a first aid kit. And actually, here's where the heal rolls come in. He pays one action, and then he, there's going to come uh, four bandages. Uh, there will be four bandage tokens we'll take out and stack on here. So he has to expend one of the bandages, pay an action, and then roll. If he rolls uh, six or less, he can heal one. But because he's a corpsman, he can add two to his rolls. So that's a really good thing because he can e either heal two or three with these other higher numbered rolls. So that will be uh, very beneficial. But he's also green, which means he's not very good at uh, attacking. So he has to subtract one from all his attack rolls. Um, and notice he can't be green and be a veteran at the same time, obviously. But this comes with his card because it says right here green. So we have to add that. And again, all the stuff that comes with him will cost seven total resource points. So the last thing he has on here is an M1 rifle listed here. So we'll grab the M1 rifle from, from our weapon deck here. Here's the M1 rifle. And just to look really quick, it has a loadout of four. So when we're actually building some items and weapons for McDougal, uh, he will, he'll have to add that loadout to his total loadout of 10. But Walsh comes with this, so we don't have to worry about the loadout part. 
so penetration one means we can ignore uh, one cover, I believe. Uh, and a cover here for both soldiers and hostiles, there'll be this number down here on the left. That's the cover that we have to defeat. And that will be rolled by a D6, a six-sided die. If, we, if somebody rolls a one or higher against McDougal, they basically can hit him or suppress him. His cover is not very good. So that's what penetration means. It gets past cover. Uh, it will increase your cover roll so you're able to defeat cover easier. At range zero, the M1 rifle um, will hit at a seven. So if you're in the same location, seven or higher on a, on a 10 sided dice. Uh, if you're at range one, it's eight or higher. And then if you, if you happen to roll a two, then you have to reload and that's where the ammo comes in. We're gonna stack five ammo tokens on top of here. If we hit it, if we roll a two, we have to flip it over and say that it's an empty clip. And then later on, we'll have to spend another action to reload, which is getting rid of the empty clip. And then there'll be five more ammo, uh, five more ammo tokens, uh, four more ammo tokens left, sorry. Uh, and he can only roll one dice and because th the only mode it has is semi, semi mode where he'll only roll one dice at a time. Um, so we'll add this. M1 rifle to Walsh's group of things. And I believe that's everything that he gets. And that all costs seven resource, resource points, all right? Um, and then the only other thing over here is Taylor costs one and he comes with panic, but that doesn't, the panic doesn't uh, get counted towards any of our resource costs because it comes with him. Uh, and Smith has a hearty hot, but uh, we don't really, we're probably really not gonna use that. I'll still grab the token anyway, so we can see what it looks like. So he has a hardy hot of one. So that just means if he has to uh, overcome some extreme heat, uh, then he can just discard, uh, expend this hardy token before he takes damage or whatever other kind of effects might happen with hot weather. All right, so what they did here next in the sample game is they equipped McDougal with a scoped rifle. So let's take a look. So we can find the scope rifle here. Here it is, scope rifle. And this has uh, three different ranges it can hit, obviously, because if you can hit from far away, and it looks like it, it hits better when you're farther away, obviously, makes sense. So if you're two locations away, you can uh, shoot a long range. And if you hit seven or higher, you hit uh, eight or higher at range one. And if you're in the same location, it's, very, it's much harder to hit, because obviously you're not gonna try to shoot somebody with a scope rifle when you're standing next to them. All right, and this is a bolt action. Here's the first time where I'm gonna pull out our, our handy dandy reference card here. So for bolt action, it says bolt action weapons, they are a normal the first time you attack, but then you have to discard another action um, before you can attack again, basically meaning you're gonna have to spend some time ejecting your shell and getting the next one ready. And you can only roll one dice at a time, that's what that means. So it's bolt action and it's one at a time. Uh, penetration is one, so again, it will defeat cover easier. This one gets six, uh, ammo tokens. So we'll put this up here with McDougal. He gets a scope rifle. And what else did they give him? Ah, they gave him two grenades. So let's find the grenade card. I think it's back here. There it is. M2 grenade. All right, an M2 grenade, you're going to roll four 10 sided dice. You hit at seven or more, seven or higher, at a range of zero. So you have to be in the same location. Uh, and expended means you need to discard whatever uh, token you put on here. Penetration to one, again, defeating cover. You can only carry five grenades at once is what that's saying. Uh, this means that it costs one towards our resource. And sorry, this uh, this scope rifle costs two towards our resource total. Um, let's put the grenade here and then we'll grab two grenade tokens, stack them up on the card. And I will, I'll come back and add the ammo tokens onto the the M1 rifle and the scope rifle in a few minutes. All right, and then the last thing that McDougal gets is a melee weapon, which will be this knife here. And it costs one resource. So you can do a strong attack and you would roll one dice. Not sure what this is. I haven't seen that yet. Stumble, uh, that's what I believe it's called. Stumble, okay, so hand-to-hand -hand equivalent to reload. Okay, so uh, if you stumble, then you have to um, cannot perform another one until you spend another action to regain your footing. That's kind of cool. Okay, so if you're doing an attack and if you roll a one, then you're stumbling and you're gonna have to roll again to try to attack again. You would hit with a seven, but you don't change your penetration. If you do a normal attack, you roll two 10-sided dice. If you roll a two, then you stumble on either of those two dice. You'll hit on nine or more 
and uh, your penetration is minus one. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and if you want to do a fast attack, it's rolling three. You hit on an 11 or higher with a penetration of uh, minus three. Hitting on an 11 or higher, um, that, that would uh, actually, I think that's how this hand-to-hand -hand modifier works. So he has a plus zero to his hand-to-hand. So he probably he's probably not going to be doing fast attacks because he's not. It's I think it's going to be pretty much impossible to roll an eleven unless there's some action card in the action deck that he can use to help with his roll. So that should be our total for our build twenty three total. So if we if we take a look, I have all my weapons selected now, all my gear is selected. So eight and seven, it's fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That's eighteen just for the soldiers, and then if we add these. 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, sorry, grenades are one each. So that's 23 total. All of these again come with Walsh, so you don't count any of the, the costs for these, as well as that panic up there comes with Taylor because it's on his card. So that's our 23 total. Next thing we need to do is we need to add our action tokens to each of these guys. So player soldiers, I believe the rules say, always get two actions. And Walsh, if we remember, he has three actions available to start. As long as he has three health, he has three actions. So we know that he's going to be taking three actions. Over here, Smith can only, oh, he always takes two actions no matter what. But he only has one health, so once he once he takes that first hit, he's out. But he gets two actions, so that's good. And then up here, Taylor only gets one action. But he has two health. All right, the next thing we need to do is put our soldier numbers out. So McDougal will be number one. We'll put his one marker here to show that he's soldier number one and he starts here on the mission card. Number two will be Walsh. And he's also, they're all starting on the mission card. Three will be Taylor. Put him on the mission card. And four is Smith. Next thing we need to do is we need to take the corresponding numbers. So there's four ones and four twos, four threes and four fours, and all of these go into a cup to be drawn so that when the hostiles need to target them, they will draw it out of the cup and target one of these soldiers here. Now I have my action deck here. Next thing I need to do is draw five cards because McDougal's our only player soldier. He'll get uh, five cards because his health starts at five. So here's five cards. See what we got. Infiltrate, kick in the door, clear orders, suppress, cautious. Okay. So all of these cards are what he will start with. 